Nearly 60% of the teenage students in Dallas are at risk of dropping out of school every year. The dropout rate for youth with disabilities is 3 to 4% higher than the general school age population. This means that only 3 out of 10 youth with a disability have a chance of graduating from high school in our community. My daughter was born deaf. She is uh, profoundly deaf, so she has basically no hearing at all. Deaf children learn so much differently from hearing children that uh, a lot of hearing people who have not grown up with a deaf person don't really understand the difference. So communication is different, the way you present information is different. Um, a lot of hearing people will think that you can teach a deaf child in signed English, that that will help them learn to read. In reality, the research is showing us that deaf children do not learn that way, that they need their language, American Sign Language, to learn the concepts and understand those, and then you can teach them, much as you would a bilingual child, the second language, English, and they will learn to read and write much better. Education was very, very difficult for me because I remember from the time before school started, my mother worked with me. She wanted to make sure that I caught up with my peers by the time I got into um, kindergarten. And one of the things she noticed is I'm three years old, I can't speak yet, I don't have hearing aids yet, and I'm behind in language three years. And one of the things that my mother noticed is I had the ability to be able to use my voice, whereas some other deaf individuals may not have the option to use their voice. And so that was actually a negative um, against me because when I went to school, the teachers thought, oh, she can talk, she's fine. But when they started to notice that my struggle with language, such as reading and writing, was a little bit below my other peers, they thought, okay, well, really, she is a typical deaf person. And I just remember my mother always fighting and fighting and saying, this is not acceptable, this is not acceptable. Tell me about your friend. Sandy. And this is a sign name, an S to the forehead, a Y to the cheek. She's deaf. Because, you know, our parents doesn't know how to sign, and so they don't understand sign language. They haven't learned sign language yet. And Sandy, is, she's, her family speaks Spanish, so they don't speak English. There are significant costs to individuals with hearing loss who do not complete high school, unemployment, underemployment, and higher rates of incarceration. Lack of support services for individuals suffering from hearing loss costs the nation $56 billion per year. When students do not have an opportunity to socialize with others, there's a lot of information that they are not learning, a lot of experiences that they're not learning. Hearing children pick up on those experiences all the time because they're around other people, they're picking up on what's going on around them. Deaf children don't. It's only when someone is signing that they are learning that. So by Nicole being involved more with deaf adults that can provide role models for her and other deaf teens, she's getting those experiences that she normally would be missing out on. My name is Tracy Michael. I'm a director of education at Deaf Action Center. Um, Tess is so important because we want deaf students and students with different hearing loss to stay in high school until they graduate. Because if they don't, if they don't graduate, they can support themselves. They will, depending on their parents, they will have no job, they will not be able to go to college. So we provide service to help them to stay in school so they can graduate and go to college and be able to support themselves and become independent. I like coming to the golf, but even though it's far, I still enjoy coming here. Coming into it, we, we didn't know what to expect. However, it's turned out to be one of our best programs, uh, best groups that we've ever had the opportunity to work with. Nicole, 
uh, Sampson, who's one of the she's one of the top participants in this program, who's been participating for a few years now. Um, activities like this keep young people like Nicole engaged. They keep them keep them motivated to finish high school, things like that. And um, Nicole, what was great about Nicole's story is that she went on to join her high school golf team, which is which is pretty unique. And the other wonderful thing about Tess is having the private one-on-one -on -one tutors. And a lot of parents, they work, have full-time jobs, you know, just, just so many factors of life that maybe the parents are not able to sit down one-on-one -on -one with their child and give them that special one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And that's one of the wonderful benefit, benefits of TEST program. I look back and had I had a TEST program in high school, I don't think I would have gone through so much of a struggle with the English language. Deaf Action Center's Teenage Educational Support Services Program helps teenagers with hearing loss reduce their dependency on public assistance because they will complete high school, thereby increasing their chances of finding and maintaining employment.